This is footage taken on December 23rd. It shows the hallways of an emergency ward in Shanghai, overflowing with hospital beds and patients hooked up to IV drips and oxygen tanks. China is battling a wave of COVID infections, but it has officially logged only a handful of coronavirus deaths after the government redefined the criteria by which COVID deaths are counted. Just how severe is China's situation? Why is Omicron, a mild variant, wreaking havoc in China, and will it spill over to the rest of the world? I had this discussion and more with Dr. Shang Lin, former lab director of the viral disease branch of Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. Take a look. Thank you, Dr. Lin, for joining Zooming in today. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, let's talk about the epidemic in China. Uh, Beijing's hospitals and crematoriums have been overwhelmed. Many people have high fever for days, and fever medicines are running out in China. Is this normal? Why does China, especially in the north, have so many severe cases? So definitely, this is very abnormal, very unusual situation, or you can say it's totally unprecedented. Uh, situation, very severe situation. So uh, first, uh, let me say this way. A lot of people think uh, this upsurge of uh, epidemic in Beijing is due to unlocking their uh, zero, zero COVID policies. I don't think so. Actually, uh, as early as in late October and early November, uh, Beijing and many parts of China has already suffering from a severe increase of the uh, infected case of COVID. So uh, because of the political need, the Chinese government uh, concealed the information at the time. So people did not know that China already suffered tremendously for this uh, new wave of the uh, Omicron spreading, uh, not only just in China, but actually in different parts of the world. There's, uh, there was a, a significant increase of new variants uh, spreading uh, in different parts of the world. And China probably did not uh, uh, get the uh, total uh, waiver for these new waves. And so uh, I, I think this is fun, one, a fundamental reason for uh, right now in uh, since November and now in almost late December, almost two months period. So these uh, virus has tremendous uh, multiple, uh, uh, proliferation in China as well as uh, rapid spread, spreading in different ages of populations. And then secondly, I think the uh, situation is very unusual is because right now uh, I think China is suffering not just from the uh, Omicron, not just from COVID. And this year, uh, the seasonal flu has has an unusual high peak and probably the most severe since the last five years and has an early peak time. Usually you you see a peak in uh, late December, January as well February to see the peak of uh, flu, seasonal flu. But this year in, no, uh, in November, Many parts of the world, especially in the north, uh, I mean, on the north uh, hemisphere, you see early arrival of the flu and also much higher peak. So uh, the flu burden is tremendous this year. And also another virus, uh, respiratory syncytia virus, is also on an unusual hike uh, for this year. So uh, there's a concept called a uh, triple demic. So it means the three pathogens are all in the big uh, pandemic or epidemic situations uh, in different parts of the world. So China probably suffer from these uh, uh, multiple waves of the uh, different pathogens attack uh, probably at the same time. So then you will see many people uh, have a more severe disease situation, a more hospitalization rate. But at the same time, I think, mm. oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I just saw a report from uh, Radio Free Asia, and they said the severe cases is also likely caused by, you know, a combination of Delta variant and Omicron. So we're seeing Delta in China as well. W what do you think? Uh, it's possible. Uh, I did uh, see reports mention some part of China still detect uh, Delta virus, but how uh, widespread the Delta virus still uh, still existing in China, I think that's a puzzle. We don't know. 
And I don't think it's a simple combination of Delta and uh, Omicron. Uh, I do believe more that there are other pathogens actually uh, co-infected. Uh, co-infection situation probably occur a, a lot more frequently, a lot more frequently than people expected. And so the overall uh, burden is much stronger. You said this has been accumulated for a while, but the question is, are we seeing the peak or the peak is still in the future? I think the peak probably is still in the future uh, because uh, usually, uh, the, for example, the flu uh, season definitely will peak higher in January and February. And in China, uh, in late January, you will uh, encounter the, the Chinese Lunar New Year. More Chinese people will migrate uh, during that time. So you are causing another wave of huge uh, spreading of viruses uh, at a time. And right now, probably still incubating, and you still see a lot of cases, of course, in, in Beijing and some other northern part of China. But I think the southern part of China will uh, suffer uh, quickly soon. But just how severe, we don't know right now. And it depends on what exactly was going on in Beijing and some some part of the North China or big cities. And I think the Chinese government still are not transparent at all. And probably still lying about the actual situations. And people have been questioning, you know, uh, it's kind of a very odd situation. Some different uh, province reporting about different strain of uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2, uh, different different strain. It was so unusually, like uh, in, in different provinces, you, you identify different strain. We don't know what, whether it's true or not. And also, uh, yeah, people do question about whether there are uh, multiple uh, variants or sub-variants of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 being circulating in China. But I believe on top of that, definitely there are other viruses. Uh, so I mentioned about influenza, I mentioned about uh, respiratory syncytial virus. But at the same time, this year, you know, um, human uh, metanuma virus, as well as adenovirus and other uh, respiratory pathogens is also in an upsurge. Even bacteria, even respiratory bacteria infection, for example, the group eight uh, streptococcus um, also uh, is in the upsurge this year. So there could be uh, multiple pathogens uh, circulating in the high peak this time. It's very uh, unusual situation and probably uh, have something to do with the, uh, the high lockdown and zero COVID policy in the last three years in China. So from this perspective, we need to think differently regarding about the whole uh, pathogen uh, I call it biosphere, you know, so you have so many different uh, viruses, so many bacteria circulating in human world. It's like um, uh, in a big uh, layer of uh, a biosphere. So if you totally suppress the the uh, SARS-CoV-2, uh, these kind of uh, pathogens, these viral pathogens, and then uh, later on it will bounce back. And then when other uh, pathogens also being suppressed, they will bounce back when you have an environment. So now they even also, uh, uh, even some of the Western scientists also being sus uh, sus suspecting that the upsurge of the flu and IS ISV, even in a, a Western country, probably have something to do with the, uh, the different uh, containment policies or different vaccination policies in the Western society. And because of the uh, many kids didn't have the chance to have, uh, you know, uh, exposure to regular season virus, regular uh, ISVs uh, due to different restrictions, different lockdown levels in different countries. So it's kind of like a immunity depth. So now uh, these kids become more uh, vulnerable to uh, the seasonal flu as well as ISV and probably to different variants of the uh, COVID as well. But I think mm -hmm. this is one of the reasons, but I think the fundamental reason right now in China, I believe is multiple pathogens uh, co-circulating and all uh, rush to the high peak at the same time. So mm -hmm. Chinese society facing a huge challenge now. Right, immunity dead. Um, it seems like uh, the Chinese government opened up at the worst possible time, the peak season for flus. Uh, what do you think the strategy is? Is it I mean, finally catching up to the rest of the world to coexist with the virus, or they're planning on something else? I think on the surface, it appears China opened up 
And now eventually they realize their zero COVID policy doesn't work. And so they have to uh, resort to the new policy uh, to coexist with the virus. But I don't think that's their purpose, because if that's their purpose to coexist with the virus, they can do it much earlier. And they know uh, Omicron's uh, has much lower pathogenicities, much earlier, early this year, they know it. Chinese scientists know it. And so I don't think they have the purpose to coexist with the virus, because in China, uh, because of the tremendous uh, burden of nuclear acid tests every day in so many big cities, right? China has already used up many of the medical uh, savings, uh, uh, also as well for people retirement funds. All the money was actually being used for so-called zero COVID policy uh, control measures, right? So they use up the money, and then Chinese society has uh, become uh, very. Uh, uh, like Japanese society, very a lot of the senior people, right? The the senior populations has grown tremendously, and the government knows it's a huge burden. And so many Chinese people also has all kinds of uh, uh, underlying uh, disease conditions. So to the Chinese government, if you if they want the economy revive, if they want the society to still enjoy some uh, benefits from uh, use generations. They, it's actually to the benefit of the Communist Party to let many senior people die. And yeah, that I was I was gonna ask you that because it just seems like the Chinese government is not trying to even control the virus. Are they just trying to let the virus go through society as fast as possible, get as many people infected uh, as soon as possible, so they can just go through this whole thing and they can be back to normal? Is this their strategy? Uh, that's part of the strategy. Uh, if they cannot control it, just uh, go through this as fast as possible. But at the same time, I think it actually is more arterial motif. It's, it's their uh, plan to eliminate a large population of senior people in China. If you would like to watch the rest of it, please go to our website, zoominyan.tv, and become a member. $5 a month or $50 a year, cancel any time. You will have access to my extended interviews and full in-depth reports. For those who are not quite ready to become a member yet, you are welcome to visit our website as well. We have all the shows you can watch on YouTube plus transcripts on our website. YouTube only allows for a short description, but on our website, we post the full transcripts. You can simply donate to us on that website as well. Have a great day and I'll see you very soon.